Afternoon everyone, welcome to Thursday. Um, we are doing a bit of crochet today. Um, it'll be um, just a nice simple, well simple, yeah it's simple, um, a nice little something different. Okay, um, we're looking at doing another uh, uh, crochet along uh, at some point so uh, hopefully Sarah's going to do that one because um, <laughs> although it, it, it it's a nice looking one so uh, you know, I could probably manage it right okay so before we start while we're waiting for people to come on hi Kate how are you um did you see yesterday's one o'clock we're doing another group quilt so um Sarah did the block yesterday so if you want to join in with our group quilt then um, you need to watch yesterday's uh, program there's a um, the pattern has gone up now on the website it's uh, you can have it as a digital or a paper copy and you get the fat quarter which is the background so that they all look the same um, you can get the background from us but the the little piece in between the the two colors that you use you choose your own colors okay um it's really cute i like that um i shall be taking some home and trying to do one myself uh another announcement we now have schmetz schmetz microtex needles in now i can't like these they sort of like they 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 not sharp um, points. They're more um, the the bloke who explains them from barn yarns explained them really well. But they they go through your fabrics better. They're ideal for silk, but I've been using it on my piecing and my batiks, and I've found them really good with my batiks. And you get a seventy ten, a ninety fourteen. Or an eighty twelve. Um, they're on the website. If you uh, want any of those, they are five pound fifty. So, without further ado, who is there? All oh, the group uh, fat quarters arrived today. Oh, they were, that was good. We only cut them yesterday, so that's good. So they're all all through. So hi Claire, Anne, Lynn, and Jane. How are you doing? Um, right, crochet. You know, I just love a bit of crochet. I just don't like explaining it. Right, this is what we're doing, okay? This is a wiggle mat. Now you can use it as a trivet. It's quite a deep, this is quite a deep um, uh, uh, padded thing. Now you could, um, we work on, on a grid. I actually quite like the back as well. Um, but you can use it as a trivet for putting your hot stuff on it. I've done it in, in um, cotton. But I was, as I was playing with them yesterday, I thought you could make a load and join them. And they would then become a blanket. So if you joined them along here, let's move this down here. Um, if you join them here, along, along there, you could just make a, a blanket or a foot runner and be nice and heavy or even um, to go in your bathroom because they'd be quite absorbent with them being um, cotton you could use it as a bath mat um, liked it um, love it it's a little bit long-winded but doesn't take a lot of time if, the, if the, all that makes sense so what we're going to do is I'm going to start with showing you how to start a grid. Then we'll look at how this goes on and then we'll do the next line. Okay. Now I'm following a pattern called wavy pad crochet, which has a YouTube video, <laughs> but you're not going to need one because you got me. Um, and it's by Nastasia. Nastasia. I will put up, um, a 
um, a link for it, okay? But they give you um, really comprehensive pictures of what your what each round is supposed to look like, okay? Now, I was going to do it in a rainbow, which, but I thought, no, they'll be expecting that. So, <laughs> I, I went with one colour and we're going to, we're going to do that, different colours, okay? So, to begin with, I'm using a cotton and I'm using this cotton because this is what I had in my stash. Now, it's a double knit. They do say for you to use a 3.75 needle uh, hook, but I didn't have a 3.75 hook. So I just went with um, the four to go with the, and I think it works out. This 3.75 is going to make it a bit tighter, but I don't think it, I suppose it depends on what look you want to go for. So you're going to make your slip knot. So um, I just make a circle and then I shove up my tail and just pull it so that it slips like that so hi carolyn and jen how are you jen uh heather i i just love crochet claire i love the um uh i like the methodical bit of it i like to do a bit of crochet every now and again i'm doing a temperature blanket at the moment um well i'm doing two and i'm loving the way they, they're coming out as well um, and Heather says she likes the back. I do, I do really like it. Anyway, to start with, we're going to chain 44, okay? Now, I've not done the maths. It's a two by two by two by two each square. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine ten i could probably have done this at home 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 sorry i can't talk 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33, 34, 35, 36, nearly there, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. Okay, so we have 44 on a chain, okay? So we're gonna be working a double, all right? Which is when you put your yarn over before you stick it in. So I think it's a treble for us. So, and you're going to go in, you're gonna skip seven. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I count the bumps. Everybody does it different. I count the bumps. So we're gonna go in on number eight. So it's yarn over, put your, um, your hook in, Pick up your yarn and pull it through. Then yarn through two, yarn through two. Okay, like that. And then you're going to chain two. One, two. So because you've chained two, you've moved on two. So you've skipped two of your original chain. One, two, and go in on the third one. Okay. So we're going to do another double there, chain two, skip two, go in the third one. So yarn over, hook through, pick up your uh, working yarn, pull through two, pull through two, one, two chain, skip two, do a treble in there. Okay. And you're just doing that all the way along. Chain two, skip two in the third one, 
I'm poking the trouble. Okay. Um, two. Skip two. Now, I'm sure those out there with the maths could work it out. Um, I think you would need to do it in groups of four. If you don't want this size or you want it bigger, you have to do it in multiples of four. just working our way through so it's been a really busy week so last week was manic because Sarah was off um, so there was all loads to do all the fabrics um, I noticed you some of you have found our uh, clearances um, which is good and then Sunday I went and had my eyebrows microbladed and that is a very weird experience. It was a lot better after she put the numbing cream on. Because until then, she's tattooing into my eyebrows, which um, is slightly painful. Um, I mean, nothing that I couldn't, that I was going to run away screaming, but after the numbing cream went on, it went a whole lot better. So we're going along here. We've got one more to go. One, two, and then one in the last one there. I like that. Ooh. Am I in? Yes, I'm in. So. Might have been in. Hang on. Let's go in there. Yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. So we have a ladder, okay? Where's my, where's my original? Okay, so we have a ladder and you can see it's a two by two by two by two. And you should have 13 holes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 holes, okay? So we need to now create a grid so it's going to be exactly the same on each row we're not moving it or anything you want the squares one on top of the other so in order to do that you're going to chain five so one two three four five turn your work and then you're going to put in your treble in the top of the last treble from the the one below and then put your treble in there so by doing five you've created a space and as we come back over you're going to put um, your last treble will go in that last bit there okay so again it's exactly the same so one two and then you're going in the top of your treble from the the one below so you're looking for your V going in pulling it through and creating another treble on top chain two going in it gets faster the more that you do the easier it is for holding and muscle memory so I'm going there I'm just going to go along make sure you chain two I kept finding that I skipped the chain two on the last one all the time So there we go, there's me missing it again. Chain two. 
I'm going to go in there like that. Okay, chain two. And we're just going to work all the way along to the end. So we'll do this row and then we will start our wave, our wiggle. We'll get a wiggle on. Like here. I think I need my hair cut, my fringe cut. It's starting to sit in my eyes like curtains. And I don't want to go back to tying it up. So I'm off next week. Uh, the idea is to sort out the garage and a spare room because my cousin's coming to stay so we want somewhere for her to be able to stay. Um, and it's our wedding anniversary on Monday. So it's been really difficult this one. I'd like to try and keep to a theme, you know, whatever the theme is for my wedding anniversary. This time it's coral, which apart from going to the barrier reef, I wasn't quite sure what I was gonna do, or jade. So I'm still working on what I'm going to give him, but uh, I'm working on it. Right, so I've come to the end. Can you see where I chained, we chained seven to begin with there. What you want is you want two for the bottom, two for the side and two on the top. Okay, so um, you've got two there, two there. So we're going to need to come in here because I've got two coming out there you're going into the third chain from your from where you are now so I need to put in two one two that's the one I always forgot and then I'm counting one two and I'm going in the third one here don't worry about it too much if you don't get it right and you end up in one of the others you're not going to notice at the end of it Okay, so we've got to that. All right, so you would just continue doing row two for 13. You want 13 spaces. You've got 13 going this way. You want 13 going up. Okay, so um, you would chain your five and then work through your row like we did before until you do have this one. All right. So you end up with 13 holes by 13 holes. Okay, you all with me so far? Uh, can you make it bigger? Yeah, I think um, if you made it bigger, you've got to go in uh, fours. I think because you want, yeah, you want at least two. So you've got two chain one, two chain, one, two chain, one, all all along. So it, I suppose as long as you're doing it in maths, somebody with your maths, work it out whether, you know, how, how it would go. But there is no reason why you couldn't make it bigger, Jane, at all. It would be a lovely, it, it's a very thick um, padded, be all right for, putting the baby on top of as well, if need be. Um, two by two by two, yes, exactly like that. Right, I'm gonna use this color because I haven't used this color yet. They say do a slip knot and put it on your hook, okay? Like that. Now, this first one, this first one, you can see we are going to, I'm going to start here, okay, in this bit here. So I'm going to start here and you're working your way around and you're doing a wiggle, okay. So all your odd numbers, apparently, um, you're going all the you you're going around all four bits of your corner, 
right? Um, so your first one goes around and it's the same stitch throughout. So we're going to start up here, okay? I'm going to start there because I'm going to incorporate this um, tail into my, my uh, as I go. So you want a slip knot to begin with. Maybe we're not going to do that. We're going to start over here. What I do when I get to these is I incorporate this as I go round. So I only have to sew backwards instead of forwards and backwards. So you're going to put your hook in and pick up your working yarn. Okay, so I'm going in here and I'm going to pick up my working yarn and I'm going to create a slip knot. I'm going to tighten all that and I'm going to chain two. One. Now for this, the wiggle, we are working a half treble, okay? So you're going to wrap your yarn like you did before. You're gonna go into the hole and pick up your yarn around, around your, um, your cable, okay? And instead of through two, through two, you're gonna go through all three, like that. And you're going to work in threes, all right? So that's my chain two counts as my first half treble. And then I do another two half trebles, which is you're going to do three half trebles on each of these posts in turn. Okay, so I'm, I've done the top. Now, because it's the corner, I'm going to put another three in to do my side. Okay, one, two, three, like that. Okay, so I now want to come, according to my map, I want to come down this one. So I'm going to turn my work so that I'm always working in the direction that I want my, um, my frills to go. So I'm going to put one, two, three in there. Okay. Now I've come down that frill. So according to my map, I want to go across here, up, cross, down, and I'm doing that. You're just working in a wave. Ooh. So I want to go in there and put three on that one. So what are you all watching on the telly at the moment? Jackie's been talking about um, The Last of Us, but I don't have Sky, so we're going to have a we're going to have a watch of it all together. So that sounds uh, really cool. So I'm going to just turn in the work so that I'm always working. I've got always got my the post that I'm working on is always in front of me. Two, three. Two, one, two, three. So, I'm sure you could make the waves bigger if you added more bits in there. You know, um, longer chains. Did a. I don't even know what they're called. A double double. So we're just creating the wave. Let me do a couple more, and then I'll show you. Oh, there's more stuff in the clearance as well, ladies. If you're not reading the comments, you're just listening. There's more clearance and job lots. We've been uh, 
been working hard we have one two three just twisting get into a rhythm I mean I did I went down to oh that's why I haven't told you on Tuesday I went down to uh, the Mumbles Swansea uh, my son is assistant manager down in uh, the Oyster House down in, in the Mumbles can you see the wiggle now See how it's going so i'm going to keep going until we get to the corner and um they were having faulty towers dining experience coming in and we decided we wanted to do that well i decided that we wanted to do that they just went along with it i think um so we went down there and met danny's girlfriend's mum and the five of us had a uh, dinner down there served by these actors who were playing Basil Fawlty, Sybil and Manuel. Well I cried laughing. I mean Fawlty Towers has never been like one of my favourite things but oh I cried laughing at some of the things they were doing. All the old gags that you see on the on the programme so if you're like my age-ish You'll remember watching that. Um, but the food, the food down there, their chef is brilliant. So it was uh, pepper soup to start, but I still can't eat peppers. So we did me a tomato soup, which was lush. There was lamb shank, cold cannon. Is that what, what it's called? <clears throat> um, which I love anyway and um, carrots. I couldn't even finish the lamb, it was just huge. And then it was, um, I had a salted caramel fondant. I couldn't even finish that. I couldn't finish something. But um, it was just, and the rooms down there, we actually stayed in the hotel. I don't know what I'm doing here, hang on. <coughs> stayed in the hotel. Their rooms were stunning, really comfortable, really good view. We had a view of the sea. <coughs> so if you're going down there, it's worth going in. Dave and I were a bit, bit disappointed that they didn't have scallops on the, on the menu because we do love their scallops. Okay, so I'm just trying to get to the corner. <coughs> but if you have the faulty towers, yo, know, it was just a good laugh. Carmel ended up with false teeth in her soup. Um, it's just, you had to be there for it to be funny. Um, but the whole experience, the whole staying down there, having dinner with my son was really nice. Because um, uh, he actually wasn't working, so it was nice. However, I didn't want to come back. Uh, the sun was shining down there, so it would have been nice to go along and carry on uh, exploring. But it's dog friendly, the hotel is, so that's good. So we'll have to go down there sometime and take the dogs. Where am I? Okay, I'm just going back up. We're nearly at the corner. And I'll show you how you're going all the way round. Two, three. So if you're using a three and um, a three point seven five it's going to be a tighter 
a tighter finish to it. But I, I, I don't think I missed that. Um, however, I've not tried it, so I don't know whether it would be better. I just kept going with the four. I forgot to pick up the whole set, you see. Right, so. We've come along and we've done a wiggle. All the way round. Okay, I've gone... You're skipping one each time, like that. Now I've come to here. Now I'm going to put three in here, then there's six in the corner to create the corner, and then I'm going to come back down here. So, let me go in um, that way. Two, three, like that. Now, I'm going to tighten this back up. Where's my piece? Like that. And we are going to put six now into that corner so that it gives me three on one side and three on the other. Bringing, while I'm doing it, I'm bringing, making sure that I'm covering my tail. And I'm going to tighten that up like that. Now, what have we done? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Like that. Make sure this is tight. And then we're going to put three in that bottom piece there. One, two, three. So you can see that my corner now becomes a loop like this okay so you get that frilled frilled corner like that so you would just keep going all the way round until you get to the end and then you slip stitch into the end and bury bury your um end so you would for this one i would be coming down here along and then back up and then i would slip stitch into this top chain here okay and that would then create my outer one so for this one I'm going to be doing this square like that and like that yes that's right so I would start here and I'm doing that so you're going into the ones that I've missed here. So again, slip stitch, okay, onto your hook, like that. So I've slip stitched onto my hook. I'm going to put this in here and grab hold of my yarn and create a slip stitch there and then chain my two. One, two. And we're just doing exactly the same stitch. Not quite as awkward as me, like that. And in there. And we just continue around your posts. Now you could map out on a bit of square paper. You could map out a message or a love heart and do that first. 
and then um, yeah you could do a love heart and then fill it in with your wiggles that would be nice or an initial is it an initial we could all do an in our initials and make a big blankie there we go and we we're just then trying to avoid joining in with the other one and you're just going around okay like that I just thought it was an interesting something different that I had not tried before the thing I like about crochet is there's so many different things that you can do using the same stitches I suppose it's the same as knitting or sewing really isn't it so you can see that you're just going to go along can you see where I've done the dark and you're just going in there and then your next row you're filling in the bits that you missed in the other row so you're just following your grid okay and that's it basically you're just going to keep going round and round and round and round and when you get to the end you slip stitch in there and then start your next colour I did wonder about why you don't start in the middle but I suppose by doing it from the outside into the middle you're going you're not going to go wrong because you're always working on on the next one the next one so you want in order for there to be a middle these spaces have to be odd I just thought of that you mental maths people out there probably worked that out so these have to be odd in order to get a central square so there you go so would it work as a, a body scrub i don't see why not i don't i really don't see why it wouldn't work as a body scrub it'll be um hiya marion it'll be um Hi Ali, um, there's no reason why it wouldn't work as a as a body scrub. You could um, you could put you could even sew the sew a soap in there. But yes, that would work. Use it, especially using it with um, there's there's a good handful there, even on my hands, which are massive. Um, there's a good handful for you to get hold of to right I'm off next week so Sarah will be here she'll be um, as long as we've got shop cover she'll be uh, over here doing um, tutorials if not I'm sure she'll walk you around anything new that's coming into the shop so I think we should have a sale on or order I'm going to order wool today or tomorrow so that um, she's there to have to put it out and I don't have to do it okay lovelies I will see you in um, a week's two weeks time two weeks time and I think are we going to I won't be here on the Thursday. I'll be doing the Tuesday, I think, because uh, Sarah will be at Create and Craft. Blimey, this year is going so fast. And then I think the week after that, we're in Newton Abbott. So we will see you around. We will be here for you. So, uh, no, you banned sales when I was off. Yeah, I know, but that's only the first time I've ever banned it. I'll see you next week or the week after. Bye.